We are working on a project here to help increase the weight of a grand action. So you see all these metal mm -hmm. weight pieces here. This is as a result of the work that we did. First, we measured with a down weight, with a tool that I have here. This is a gram weight that each is divided into little sections. You can see there, the little layers. Mm -hmm. And each one of those has, so there's this one here is uh, 32, then 16, then eight. And then I put at the top two more because uh, we were trying to get close to 60 with this little knurled screw at the top that makes mm -hmm. it close to um, uh, another gram there. So close to 60. And so when we were putting this on and deciding how much we needed, we would put it in this front, over this front rail, and we'd hit this. And then we would watch how fast these go down. That's and, very, that's very interesting, yeah. Yeah, and Just so it's- The speed of it has to be exact. Right, mm -hmm. and so there is friction involved. And so we, we were trying to even things out so that each key felt uh, very similar as it's going down. And you can see maybe there's slight variations, but overall we, we succeeded in making a very similar uh, down weight for each of the keys. Um, so the, each key then has uh, a factor of down weight and up weight, and the difference there affect, is affected by how much friction is in the action. This particular uh, work that we did today, we didn't address the friction uh, or the uh, uh, as the up weight was. That means then there would be other kinds of adjusting we would need to concern, be concerned about, and that was not the domain of today's work. Um, was how much to add? So we started out about 50, around 50 to 55 grams, and realized, actually less than that, 47 to 52 or 53 in that range. And so the upper end tended to be lighter in down weight, you know, so it got close to the bottom. Uh, it got heavier and heavier, such that we, the heaviest was down here. And so that's, that's because the, there are less wood over there, I see. Exactly, so you see the size of the hammer. Um, there's roughly a one to five ratio uh, between the amount of weight that it takes to push down a key, uh, the amount of distance versus the distance that travel, that's five times roughly the distance that this travels here. And then the weight that you, that's required to push this down is roughly five times the weight that that is. Mm -hmm. So this whole ratio item is, are, is things that we wanna be concerned about. And hence, uh, as we look at the different weights on here, we are, uh, when we wanna add uh, the weights to the keys, we're putting it on that side to increase the amount of weight that these cover. Uh, inside the key, we won't show that right now, but there are weights, uh, every grand has them on this side and different manufacturers are uh, work, work with that uh, in different ways. Steinway spends a lot of time on that. Yamaha does too, and this is a Kawai. So the amount of the work we're putting into this, this instrument is improving its ability significantly to be more even and uh, the player uh, needed a little bit more weight, so yeah. this will help with that. Well, I was interested in the carbon fiber parts over here. Oh, yes. Can, can you talk a little bit about I that? I surely can. Um, the new menu, Kawaii is an innovator in this. Um, every manufacturer has been working on different aspects of piano design, and Kawaii has worked a lot on the actions. Now, what is this? Carbon fiber is a kind of plastic, but it's a new kind of plastic with less of plasticizers that make it dissolve in, in um, a certain amount of time. So this should be very long lasting. It's, uh, it also doesn't swell with the moisture. Mm. You see with the wood, uh, we have these parts here and they have a pivot point here. We see a little pink color and that's around a little brass pin. And um, if anything with, that's organic will swell and shrink according mm -hmm. to moisture. Uh, of, you know, of, it, you know, of the environment. And when you do a carbon fiber, you don't have that. So it helps uh, reduce the uh, problems that can, that can happen with uh, change in environment. Yeah. 
So that's that's a significant uh, uh, innovation from Kauai. Yeah. Someday I would in, uh, upgrade it to 100% carbon fiber parts. Yes. Yes, and indeed. the only thing I would need to worry about is the hammer felt <laughs> being, <laughs> being worn so quickly. That's true. Yeah. Okay, so uh, so we decided how much to add. So in the upper end, we started around five more grams, uh, graduated in the middle toward seven-ish, and then maybe up to ten grams more as mm -hmm. we got down to the base. And but you see, even yeah, here, right. there's some places that don't have uh, extra weights. And that's well, because they were already fair, fairly few. Uh, mm -hmm. We got we got two over here yeah. and one here and, and a few at the a few at, at the end. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was pretty good to begin with, but mm -hmm. uh, un until we until we measured it, it right? Was, uh, you know something something. And uh, you can see, but there's still some movement in and out too of of some of those. Yeah, to that indicate that there was and, and and the more in the heavier it is. That's correct. Right. That's very true. Okay, so we marked them. So I took a pencil then and marked each weight, but with the idea that even though these were manufactured with being uniform, uniform in weight, uh, reality is there's probably slight differences. So I wanted to make sure if I was using that, that weight, then I was going to use it on that key. So I marked it and I made a little sheet like this. And uh, when I at, when I marked it, then I would put it on the numbers. So you see, it's all the way to 88. There's 88 notes. So I would put the weight over each key that it would go on. So some of them got skipped. That helped me then pull the weights out, mark them with an awl, which is this kind of tool here, and that would you would have a hole there, and then you could drill. So I just well, had um, the reason we marked it is so that. We could take this entire. Remember my oh, question. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This entire thing must come off. Yes. For for you to be able to screw th screw the screws in. That's true, and also yeah. to drill. So that's very true. So this top this top part of the action, there's screw each. There's five brackets. One, two, three, four, five. Each one of them has a screw. On each bracket on the top, the front, and the back. And so all those had to be removed. This entire assembly is is taken off. Then at that point, that's when um, we had marked it before uh, while everything was on. Mm -hmm. We marked it before and then I could take it off uh, and then duplicate the places where I had the pencil marks and then use the awl to, to mark the holes. Then I used yeah. the drill. I drilled it there and I had a depth gauge on there. So it would only go down a certain distance because I didn't want to draw all the way through the key. There's no need for that. Mm -hmm. um, so, so to recap, yeah, we weighted each key, knocked on each key, yeah, and then uh, the adjusted the weights, mm. and then we mark it on with pencil, and then we have to take it off and put it on this piece of paper, and then we take this whole what, what's this whole thing uh, called? Cradle. Uh, the cradle off to to mark with that tool the holes where we drill, and then we drill. Yeah. And then we put it all back. Then I used, I didn't use, a lot of times you'd say, oh, let's just use a drill. And we go boom, 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 and mm -hmm. zip the screw in. To and save time? To save time, but I... Bad idea, right? I, well, in this context, it is kind of a bad idea. Just used a ratchet screwdriver to screw in each one of those, because then I could feel when it bottoms out and there's less danger of damaging either the threads going into the wood. Because this is... Of hardwoods, the the wood that's used here is toward the softer end, and um, also there there could be a danger because it is a hardwood of cracking the wood. We don't want to create cracks, and we're causing greater wear to the keys. To that's why we key. drilled first. Drill yeah. exactly, and so uh, then by by using the hand that I can knew I could feel when it bottoms out. I don't damage the head because if at some point we need to change things. We don't want to make it harder on ourselves for the future. We want to respect uh, any technician working on this instrument. So once we had that in there and put those, then we reinstalled uh, the action cradle, put it and make sure everything's in proper alignment. Uh, then we can do the final adjusting of all the keys. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so the proof... By proof, that, you mean um, regulating it? Yeah. Um, so regulation, just in short order, means adjusting. There's... Uh, Yamaha catalog 37 different adjustments on a grand piano and 19 different adjustments on an upright. Mm -hmm. So the, the long and the short is everything needs to be in good working order. We started out with, with reasonably good uh, working order here with regulation. And so 
Yeah, well, I, uh, I spent quite a bit of time playing on this piano before I made the decision to buy it. Mm, so. Yes. Yes, and so and they, they did a lovely job in, in the storeroom of preparing it. What else can we do? There's a possibility we might want to even increase more weight. Now, well, I, I do want more yeah, weight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Now, why would that be necessary? Well, not everyone should do this. Why? Well, we, if you don't play enough, there's the danger of uh, damaging your muscles, tendons, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So you need to be very careful about how you do that. This is very calculated. So in each key then, there are weights at various places here. And so by increasing weight, we could move these or we could remove weights in the front. Every manufacturer counterweights on the grand, the hammers. So you see this little weight in here. There's every key or almost every key has some sort of weighting in there to, to even things out. Except for the last one. Right. Well, and even on then, they may even have something on this side. Yeah. Oh, so to make it look pretty. <laughs> the, yeah, so they only, <laughs> they only drill up our way uh, through. Piano makeup. Yes. But anyway, that's to balance out the hammers. Mm -hmm. The reason why I would suggest doing that is because we don't want to cause uh, premature breaking of the keys. The more weight you have in here, the, the more effort that it takes to move things and there can be a flexing of and that lever. The key is, is organic. Mm. And uh, every weak point, that if it gets stressed over many, many, many times, uh, there can be a gradual breaking. So a case yeah. in point, I have a Kimball from 1935. And uh, finally, after all these years of playing, um, one of these broke. Mm. And so I had to re back together. So, uh, so the long and the short is, uh, this is something we want to do very carefully. Uh, there are reasons to do it, and um, and uh, here's a good reason to do it. Yeah, I never knew what that was. Yeah. So but, those are but, weights. But you take those weights out, it'll be it'll be slightly li uh, lighter. Lighter. Well, actually, it'll feel heavier because it's. Oh right, that's right. Side. Because um, because the weight transfers over there. Exactly. By reducing weight here. Right. Yeah. yeah. So then that, Genius. Yeah, like so that means then you have less inertia, mm -hmm. which means it takes less effort to get the whole key moving. Right. Which means then there's less stress on the key. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and then if you pop it out, what's the tool you use to pop those weights out? Uh, there'd be some different kind of, there's, uh, there's some punches that we can use. Okay. Punches. And then what do you fill it with? Uh, these little wood plugs that we put Wood with. plugs. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, earlier we had, uh, we had this. Um, in inside the piano and mm -hmm. I tested it and uh, yes uh, it does make a difference and um, playing through uh, just a short section I felt my muscles um, having to work a little harder and that's exactly what I wanted so my, my goal is to you know when I do perform that no piano will catch me by surprise yes I want to be like really prepared for it you know so. yes and so this should do it this should mm -hmm. uh, you're on your way <laughs> yeah 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 and overall uh, um, a job like this i mean we're not even done mm -hmm. but just this phase this right. phase uh it took what four hours right right That's yeah about right yeah and okay and and success yep yep today was a success and a i'm gonna idea. call you often because i'm gonna completely destroy this piano <laughs> <laughs> you you already felt the difference. You already saw the difference. I did in in just what three weeks. Right. Three yeah, I can hear. Two, I can two hear three it. weeks. Yeah, just in the voicing. Uh huh. I I only played it twice. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that amazing? And I played without reserve. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a hard player, but I play with the flow of the music. And mm -hmm. some of it demand a lot of energy, and some of it demand a lot of sensitivity. And and that precisely that caused the the regulation to be off. Yeah. And it's more actually, the regulation was really, uh, the adjusting of all these parts uh, didn't change very much. It was more as the hammers get, get grooved. And this is one of the reasons I suggest voicing pianos a bit, uh, that every time I come in tune, to do a little bit of voicing uh, to include that or a little bit of regulation or both. Because every time the hammer hits the string, or it hits the strings, you get these grooves. That's already flatter than like three weeks ago. Right. And, and then uh, the tone changes and, mm -hmm. and you get uh, less color 
have differences. Yeah. And you get uh, unevenness, and then you compensate with how you play in order to be able to do that. And then sometimes the ones that have gotten deeper <clears throat> and they've gotten softer, then you play harder and you make the hammers wear faster. And so uh, just keeping the hammers uh, shaped and voiced will make your hammers actually last longer. <laughs> yeah, I'm nervous, man. I'm nervous. <laughs> there we go. Uh, I, I just you pulled that one key up, and I and I looked at it. We just filed it last time. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. and, and and this section, I can tell, probably was played a little bit more uh, compared to some of the other ones. Well, the third movement in Rock Three is a lot yeah, of yeah. up there, right? And 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 the hammer wear indicates that you played quite a bit there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm.